Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the most famous game of all time. And I know it's a bold statement, but this game actually was played in 19th century in 1858 by Paul Morphy against Duke of Brunswick Carl and Count Isuard in Paris. And now uh, two questions come to mind. Why the name is the most famous game of all time? Because that was the heading used by Frank Marshall in his comparative chess to describe the game of Morphy against the Duke and Count in Paris 1858. So that's the, that's the answer. And also another question, why Morphy faced two opponents at the same time? There is also the story behind this. So as you probably know, Paul Morphy in the age of 21 couldn't find the worthy opponent in America. So he came to Europe for the tournée and he wanted to, you know, play against the strongest players in Europe, like Anderson, Staunton and others. And uh, what is important, all newspapers wrote about that celebrity from America who came to Europe uh, and, you know, challenged all the, the masters and winning the game. So um, Duke of Brunswick Charles II uh, wanted to meet and maybe play with uh, Paul Morphy personally. So uh, he had the plan. First, he invited Morphy for the dinner and uh, they were discussing um, during the dinner because Paul Morphy accepted uh, a lot of things, um, you know, related to chess and art. Uh, so Duke of Brunswick actually invited Paul Morphy to the opera. But there was one hook because Duke of Brunswick actually was known in Europe as the scandalist, as his hobby was playing chess in opera. Something unusual. But for example, I give you one example. This is the uh, scan of the article uh, of the note actually of Innsbrucker Nachrichten from November 1857. That means one year before uh, this game. And it is written there as follow Paris 13 November. Yesterday, Duke Charles of Brunswick caused a great scandal at the Italian teacher. He was playing chess with his companions during the performance and making so much noise that the teacher's director had to demand that he be quiet. So that was the hook. But uh, Paul Morphy actually accepted. He wanted to see the opera and he didn't mind, OK, if he can play the chess at the time. Uh, now, another interesting story, Morphy versus the Duke and Count was played either during a performance of Norma opera or most probably during the Barber of Seville. So which one? And now the funny thing is that this question was raised hundreds of times and there is no uh, clear answer. There are some people who, you know, um, saying that Norma was that was that opera and, and give some arguments, uh, give some proofs. And also um, there are opponents who say and the Barber of Seville was the was that opera. So, uh, you know, there is a lot of arguments uh, over Internet. And this dispute has lasted for, you know, uh, more than 100 of years. So it's pretty amazing. And, you know, the best response to all of them is who cares when Michelangelo was painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Who cares what chance was heard from below? So that's the you know, when when you have some piece of art like the Michelangelo painting or the game like uh, Paul Morphy gonna, you know, produce, then who cares what, what was the, you know, music behind. And now um, there are often remarks about Duke and Count chess skills, how strong they were or so how weak they were. Uh, but we can find actually the evidence of some game produced by, by both and some records of the quite decent, respectable games played by Duke of Brunswick, who at that time was 54 years old. But, uh, let's assume that the combined strength of the Duke and the Count could be around maybe 2000, OK? Probably less, but maybe 2000. They were not professional players, uh, but quite decent players. And of course, Paul Morphy, the strongest chess player in the world at that time, 
2690 it's his um, estimated ranking by chessmetrics.com uh, there are some pages which estimated for 2800 but i think it's too much as other players uh, couldn't reach that level so uh, paul morphy couldn't you know uh, create such a high ranking like 2800 2690 that's enough he was the best player in the world anyway so as we know the background already, let's jump into the game. We have e4 by Paul Morphy, e5 by Duke and Count team, knight f3 and d6. Philidor defense on the board and now about Philidor defense. It's quite passive because black don't fight for d4 square, um, but it's also solid at the same time. And interesting that in 2012, Shahriar Mamedyarov won with the Philidor defense as black against Magnus Carlsen, Sergei Karyakin and Alexander Morozevich. Can you believe that? So if you are prepared and you, you know, start to play something which is not the main line of, you know, main openings, you still have a chance against the much stronger opponents. Just you have to be very well prepared. Uh, so we have d4 by Paul Morphy and bishop on g4. And now in move 3 already black play a uh, quite weak move. Um, so Paul Morphy played d takes on e5. We have bishop on f3. Uh, of course uh, this continuation is impossible because of the exchanging the queens and winning the pawn. And at the same time attacking the bishop and the pawn on f7 so white would really really dominate the game this is why bishop on f3 was played and we have queen on f3 by um, paul morphy we have d takes on e5 and now bishop on c4 attacking f7 and actually uh, threatening the checkmate uh, so knight on f6 by duke and count and here we have the move which if you are the beginner, you should try to find. So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the strongest continuation for white. Okay, so uh, the move you are looking for is queen on b3. Queen on b3 and now this battery facing f7 and also b7. So um, two squares are under attack. A very strong move. We have queen on e7 by duke and count. And the next Paul Morphy's move was widely commented in the chess world. So, for example, Steinitz and other leading players wrote that, um, you know, uh, queen on b7 is winning. Why uh, Paul Morphy didn't play that? Also, bishop on f7 with check and then follow with queen on b7, picking up the rook. Why he didn't play that? And the best answer for that gave Emmanuel Lasker. He wrote in his chess player scrapbook. This is a great game played against a weak combination. On the eighth move, white could have won the b7 pawn, uh, which would have been good enough to win the game. Or played bishop on f7, followed by queen on b7, but that would have been a butcher's method, not an artist's. So, you know, Emmanuel Lasker understood that the artist cannot play the butcher's move. So this is why Paul Morphy actually play knight on c3. But let's check what would happen if queen on b7 is played. Uh, black has only one move. Here is uh, queen on b4 with check. And after exchanging the queens, c3, uh, bishop c5 and white um, stands better because white has actually extra extra pawn so that's the difference this is indeed the butcher's method not an artist and you will understand what artists mean by the end of this game uh, and the other combination uh, bishop on f7 with check queen f7 and now queen on b7 now bishop c5 and now white if take on a Eight, then that is really bad because black would have more activity uh, so uh, queen on c8 have to be played and after king on e7 queen on h8 uh, black of course would have something like bishop on f2 with check and white if takes would be in danger again uh, because of this discovered double check so uh, king on e2 the game would continue but again, that's the butcher's way of playing chess. So this is why knight on c3 was played. 
we have c6 now defending the uh, b7 pawn uh, and here we have bishop on g5 bishop on g5 another good move uh, developing the bishop but also putting black in some kind of zugzwang now black of course has some moves but uh, what to play this bishop is stuck this knight actually is stuck if it's moved um, to d7 then um, white can take on b7 and uh, get the very strong attack on the queen side uh, if it's moved to a6 the same now bishop would take on the um, a6 and uh, with the double pawns uh, white would rule on the on the queen side of course if knight on a6 is played um, then we would not have the most famous game of all time b5 was played and now feel free to pause the video if you don't know this game yet and probably everybody knows Knows. but if you are fresh player maybe you don't know so feel free to pause the video and find the winning uh, combination for white while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so actually there is only one move the rest of the moves just equalize the game so it's um, it's it's not so bad move but it's losing move because of this one move which we are looking for knight on b5 this is the move we are looking for and now if c takes on b5 we're gonna have the most famous game of all time the last chance for black actually not chance but the slightly better move would be queen on b4 and exchange the queens that would be slightly better and after queen on b4 bishop on b4 c3 uh, c takes on b5 we could have bishop on b5 with check, knight b on d7 and now uh, just castle on the queen side and white gonna win um, another uh, minor piece so uh, white would have three pawns against one pawn on the queen side and winning the game and of course that would not be the most famous game of all time but we have c takes on b5 and this is where the game shines we have bishop on b5 with check knight b on d7 and now castle with the attack on the d7 knight and now this knight is attacked twice and this knight is actually pinned that's quite dangerous so rook on d8 is played and here uh, very known tactical motives to eliminate one of the defenders and bringing one more attackers so uh, we have rook takes on d7 uh, and now rook takes on d7 and rook on d1 so white still attacking d7 point but now there is no defender on d8 uh, queen on e6 removing the pin but also asking white to exchange the queens but now culmination of this sequence we have bishop on d7 with check now knight can takes on d7 and now queen on b8 with check what a move sacrificing the queen now we have knight on b8 and now checkmate and now look at this Paul Morphy has only two pieces and two pieces are enough to you know to checkmate the opponent black still have one two three four pieces queen included really really impressive game so if you like this game press like if for some reason I cannot believe that but if you don't like this game press unlike leave the comment what is your favorite game maybe I could record the video about that game also and and you know upload it soon and if you don't want to miss any wonderful game of the you know from the chess history and the stories behind them press subscribe press the bell button and I hope you enjoy it Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.